Good evening. Welcome to Personally Mary. I'm Mary, your certified Christian Hope Life Coach. And tonight I have with me special guest Tucker Bearden. Tucker is back for his third visit. And tonight he's going to talk with us on lucid dreaming. And I want to thank Tucker for coming in on short notice. Um, Jody and I both appreciate it. Jody went to go pick up her daughter and her daughter had the flu. So we're sending prayers to Jody. Give me one moment while I bring Tucker on. Hey, Veronica, how you doing? Hey, Wendy. Good evening, Jeremy. Hey, Dina. Good evening, Robert. Just waiting for Tucker. Hey, Tucker, good to see you. Good to see you, too. How are you doing? I'm glad you, thank you for coming on in short notice, Jody, and I appreciate it. Oh, it ain't a problem at all. You know, I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. So tonight, um, you were here last week, and you were talking about, uh, you brought up the topic of lucid dreaming. So if you would mm -hmm. um, please, I'm going to give you the floor so you can tell everybody what it is and explain lucid dreaming. Okay, cool. We'll get right into it. All right, lucid dreaming, for those of you who do not know, is whenever you are aware that you're dreaming while you're asleep. Now, the cool part about lucid dreaming is that you, you can control your dreams. So long as you know that you're dreaming, anything that you can come up with in your imagination will come to life in your dream. I, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is picking the brains of some of the greatest minds in history. Though everything that is happening is being created in your subconscious, in your subconscious imagination, it, it's still fun to experience those things, and it's a learning experience and an eye-opening experience to speak to these people. Like, for instance. Is sit down with someone like Nikola Tesla and shoot ideas back and forth uh, about about uh, my personal inventions and things that I'd like to do. Uh, sit down with Einstein and discuss uh, theoretical physics, astrophysics, uh, and quantum physics. Um, one of the my recent ones that I did not too long ago is I sat down with Abraham Lincoln on the steps of the White House and had a discussion with him about the current presidency and where he thinks that the, the country is currently going. So it's, it's really fun once you, figure out, uh, once you figure out the keys to it and you're able to, to control it. I personally enjoy flying over uh, Japan uh, and, and, and flying over the ocean with, with my hand down in the water and then going up in the clouds and experiencing the world from a bird's eye view uh, I, and even, even going to the moon or other planets and going to other places in the universe and getting to see them firsthand and experience them because your brain actually cannot uh, tell the difference between when you're actually experiencing it and whenever you're imagining it. So when you're in your dream, your body and your mind are have no idea that you're dreaming. They are. It, it, your body is reacting to everything as though you, it's really happening. So, so I guess I can give you some tips. I give you a few tips on how to lucid dream. For especially for beginners, because it is a mind-bending experience. It's truly, it's 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 an extreme experience. It's no it's no more dangerous than going to sleep normally, but some people cannot mentally handle what happens when you 
go into a lucid dream. Uh, so what, one of the things that, that you can do if you would like to lucid dream is, is practice doing what's called a reality check throughout the day. So if I, if I want to lucid dream tonight or several nights this week, uh, around 10 to 25 times a day, I will put my hand up and then touch my palm. And if my finger does not go through my palm, I am not dreaming. This is the real world. So, uh, so every time I do this, hopefully my finger's not going to go through there. Now, if you keep doing that, you do it 10 to 25 times a day. 25 is the, is the, is the key number. If you do it 25 times a day, try to do it several times an hour, set an alarm to do it, do it, uh, 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 do it at random increments uh, throughout the day. And this, this, creates a, this creates a pattern in your mind. And eventually, this will happen in your dream. And when it happens in your dream, your finger will pass through your hand. And once your finger passes through your hand, you know, okay, I'm dreaming. Once you're aware that you're dreaming, there is something that's going to happen. There, your brain, once you become aware that you are asleep, you have to be very cautious as to what you say and what you think. Because anything that you focus on becomes real in your dream. Anything that you say happens. If you use the statement, I wish I wasn't dreaming about anything, you'll wake up. Uh, it, your brain it sees that as an off switch and it shuts off the dream and you, you, uh, you, you wake up. Why that happens, I don't know. I think it's because your brain takes everything you say in your dream absolutely literal. I mean, there is no sarcastic anything. If you speak it, it comes into existence. Um, if you say, uh, if you, for instance, there's, uh, the, there's a story of a man who was dreaming lucidly. And he, he was sitting down and he said, uh, he said, man, I sure am thirsty. Uh, and, and all of a sudden there was a bat of living lemonade. And uh, he said, uh, what was it? He said, uh, darn, I don't remember all the details to it, but, but he said, uh, he, he said he, he, was drink, he drank the lemonade, and then he, he heard a sound in the woods, and he goes, oh, that must be a ghost. And ghosts appeared. And then he, he got scared, and he said, these ghosts, oh, my God, they're going to kill me. And he... Um, so not literally in the dream, um, but that that gives you an example of how extreme the it, you, how extremely literal things are taken in your dreams. Uh, another tip: you can't just do the whole hand touch thing. That helps, but there's a process to this. What you, one of the things one of the other things you do is you want to put a dream journal next to your bed within reaching di where, where you can reach out without getting out of bed and write down you want to do is every time that you remember something in a dream no matter what it is any detail in the dream you write it down in this journal and eventually you will notice a pattern like for instance, i in my dreams uh one of the patterns i have is i know that i'm dreaming if one can put my finger through my hand and two i see a lady with long straight black hair now, why that is, I don't know, but uh, it's a, a tall lady with long, straight black hair. And once I see her, I know I'm dreaming. Now, I've never actually interacted with this woman in my dreams, but she may be a person passing by. I might see her standing somewhere. It's just that is a symbol that my subconscious has created that alerts me that I am sleeping. And like I said, once you're aware, you see, before you're aware that you're asleep, your thoughts, your thoughts don't have any power. Uh, you, you're, you can, you'll experience your dream as it is in real life, and you're in your mind. You will, you will, you will be see, You won't be aware that you're asleep. So you'll switch from dream to dream to dream. Each dream, when you're not lucid dreaming, each dream lasts around two minutes or so. That's why when you're dreaming, 
you'll be dreaming about one thing and then suddenly you'll switch and somewhere else. And then when you go back and think about the dream, it didn't make any sense that you were sitting there talking to one person and then you're playing baseball somewhere. It just, just, it randomly <laughs> switches. Wow. When you're lucid dreaming, this doesn't happen. You can control and extend the dream. So I, I have spent an entire night uh, uh, actually looking at the inside of a volcano while, because I would, it was just, just something that I chose to do in that dream. And that was to walk into the magma of a volcano and actually look at the magma from the inside instead of seeing it from the outside and see how it moves. And uh, if I've actually traveled to the inside of a cell and observed a nucleus up close. Uh, I mean, it, I, I've tra I traveled to the surface of the sun and watched the arcs come over and touch each other and cause uh, uh, solar flares and, and magnetic uh, pulses. It's, it, it really is, once you gain control of your dreams, you, you are, you, you're, you, what you can see is truly mind bending. It will change the way you look at the world. At one point, I was lucid dreaming so consistently that I, I lost track of reality because my dreams, I became so skilled at lucid dreaming that I, my dreams were so real, I couldn't tell the difference between being asleep and being awake. That's why I ended up starting this, poking my hand. Because if I poke my hand and my finger doesn't go through, it means I'm awake. And once you once you lucid dream enough, your dreams will become so real. There'll be no difference in them and what you're experiencing right now, except for you have complete control over the universe. I see there's quite a few comments coming yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what I have to say. Veronica, um, she said she's had uh, lucid dreams, and um, she's also said she's had dreams that become reality. Yes, and then, uh, those those are called premonitions. Yeah, and then um, Wendy said that um, she definitely had a dream and hit reality that it was so real. And I saw something. Let's see, what was Robert saying? He was uh, talking about the browser on his computer, and he fixed it where he couldn't see you and just seen the top of my head, but he got that fixed. Oh, okay, cool. And then, then he cool. said, um, I am sleeping quite well, much better. The daily double nightmares each night I would get while working. And Robert was talking, um, I think... Well, all right, so here, I'll, I'll share with you uh, the, the, the entire process. If you would like to begin lucid dreaming uh, quickly, cause, because most of the time it takes a lot of practice. Sometimes it takes uh, several weeks to actually complete. But if you follow this process directly, you can lucid dream within 24 to 48 hours as long as you as as long as you follow it directly and truly intend on it because you have your brain is a supercomputer and it does whatever you program it to do whatever you repeat over and over and over again becomes your reality so if you would like to lose a dream within 24 to 48 hours follow the following steps and that is step 1 get a dream journal Make sure that it's sitting next to your bed. Step two, set an alarm for two hours bef to, to go off two hours before you normally wake up. And people say, well, I don't want to wake up too. I want to get my sleep. What's you talking about? I want to wake up to bed. Well, you're not actually getting out of bed. This is the hardest part. This is well, the second hardest part of lucid dreaming. The first hardest part is controlling your dream. Because one, like I said, once you are, once your mind is aware that it is asleep, it go your anything your imagination comes up with becomes real. And believe me, that can get crazy fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially if you get scared. If something in your dream scares you, oh man, you'll have things popping up all over the place. Just it's it's really it's really nuts. Uh, but okay, 
So, but the this is essential. What you're wanting to do, this is very, very hard to do, but put your phone next to where you can just reach over and turn off your alarm. Set your alarm for two hours before you wait, you would normally wake up. Then when that alarm goes off, do not open your eyes. That is, that is key. Keep your eyes closed, even though you're awake, and reach over and turn the alarm off. Now, the reason for this is because your body function, your 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 brain uh, is is functioning at its its highest capacity during your dream during dreams when you are in REM sleep, and REM sleep happens at several after hours after you you go to sleep. So you want to shift into REM sleep, and then you want to teeter yourself out of REM sleep and fall back into it. When you fall back into it, your mind takes reality with it. Now, uh, this is just for beginners. Once you st have, are able to do it on command, you take away the alarm. You won't need it anymore because your uh, lucid dreaming will become natural. Now, uh, step three, the day you want to lucid dream, all day long, every time you get a second to think about it, think about uh, a specific phrase. Mine is I wish. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. And I think about lucid dreaming. Uh, I I am dreaming. I am, uh, I am asleep. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. And uh, all, multiple times a day. Uh, I mean, all day long. You want to listen to stuff about lucid dreaming. You want to Get, you want to read about lucid dreaming. Talk about it with your friends. Talk about it to yourself. I'm good at that. Have a conversation <laughs> with the wall at your house. I, I mean, whatever you have to do to embed the thought of lucid dreaming being awake in your sleep is, or being aware that you are asleep, embed that in your brain all day long along with doing your reality check. Uh, and don't paint, do not use painting yourself as a reality check. Because pinching yourself uh, has a tendency to wake yourself, wake you up in your dream, and you don't want to wake yourself up. You want to make yourself aware that you are dreaming. So, uh, so a lot of people they they try that. They say, "Well, I'll pinch myself. Uh, I, I've got to be dreaming. Pinch myself." Uh, well, they say that because pinching yourself in your dream causes you to wake up, unless you are stuck in REM in a deep REM sleep. And then, uh, and then, if you do not have astronomical control over your your dreams, your dream will take control of itself. You'll be aware that you're dreaming, but you will not be able to wake up. Uh, I've had this happen many times. It's actually a dream that I have that's reoccurring mm -hmm. that I can't stop it once it starts. Uh, I'm sorry, I ain't trying to take all your time up. If you'd like to... I'm in there. You know, Rich joined and he says he's giving you a homework assignment. He says you need a guide in here. You need to uh, write out a guide. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, I tell you what, I, I could, I could, but that those are the few steps for someone that wants to lucid dream for the first time. Have a dream journal. Record anything that you can about your dream until you notice a pattern. Continue to write your dream journal. Set an alarm two hours before you wake up. No, you would normally wake up when the alarm goes off. Do not close your eyes. I mean, do not open your eyes. Keep them closed. Turn the alarm off and go back to sleep. Uh, thirdly, uh, do a reality check at least 25 times a day before you want the day you want to lose a dream, whether it be poking your hand. Once you do this in your dream, your finger will go through your hand, uh, and that's how you know that you're dreaming. Fourth, re- enforce the thought you want your brain to be stuck on the thought pattern of i'm a i am aware that i'm dreaming i am lucid dreaming i am awake in my sleep whatever you have to embed in your brain to get it to go to that so if you have any more questions about lucid dreaming i would, be, I would love to share them with you i actually have a really cool story for you whenever you're ready uh, about my lucid dreaming experience as a child and how it led to the book that I am currently writing. 
Go ahead. The floor is all yours. You got all oh. the time you need. <laughs> okay. All right. So whenever I was a kid, I began lucid dreaming whenever I was around nine years old. Uh, I did it on accident one time. I, I remember I remember I woke up uh, in my in my dream. I woke up on a floor in a castle that and, and on the other side of the castle, there was a war going on. And I could see I could hear people in agony and I could see the explosions of uh, the flashes of the explosions in the sky and hear the mortar fire. And I suddenly said I, I i suddenly was looked at my hands and i realized something wasn't right and the next night i had the exact same dream and then the next night the exact same dream so i realized oh my goodness i'm dreaming and then suddenly as soon as i realized i'm dreaming all of a sudden i had control of my dreams now i had to practice control because it, in the real world i may have a negative thought that comes up and then I brush it away or I have things that come up and then I think about it for a second, and brush it away. Well, in a dream, if you think it, it pops up. So any of those thoughts you have, they come into reality in front of you. So if you begin reminiscing on something that happened in your past, then that experiment experience will be recreated in front of you and you will experience it again. And that's no fun. A bad dream can get really, really, really. A lucid dream that goes wrong is a million times worse than a than a nightmare or a night terror that that goes wrong. Uh, it's it is it is crazy. I mean, people have been known to have heart attacks and die uh, because it 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 gets so intense. But as I was a kid, I used to have this dream where I would go into this clearing, and I walk through a path in the woods. Uh, a, a, we're in there, there's a fog, a haze over the woods. I walk through this path in the woods, and there's an old man uh, s sitting on a bluff or a rock overlooking a cliff. And he's sitting cross-legged, uh, uh, sitting there meditating with his head down. And I, I can't see his face, but this man shares great wisdom with me. And I keep having this dream. I go back to him over and over and over again for years. I mean, it was like, it was, pro yeah, it was uh, around 12 years. Yeah, it's 12 and a half years I did that. I, I had that dream multiple times a month. And I would go to this man and ask him all these questions about life. And, and, and basically, he was my Google <laughs> so and I went, I went, I went to him, and he shared all this great wisdom with me. And it wasn't until about two years ago that I went to him, uh, just like a normal, a normal dream. I went to him, and suddenly he looked up, and it was me. It was, it was an old version of myself uh, that I've been speaking to this entire time. So my mind cre it, it depicted in my dream the man that I am destined to become and the man that I truly, in my heart, want to be when, uh, when my time comes. The person I want to become is what got depicted before me. And I was able to come to him and, and ask him questions about life and, and embrace that wisdom. People wonder where what they say you're you're wise beyond your years. Well, that's why it's because I went to this what I call the guru within. <laughs> that's the name of the book is the guru within, because everyone has this capability. If you envision who it is you truly want to be in this world, who it is the 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 with the perfect qualities, looks, uh, everything that you could possibly imagine yourself becoming if you envision and implant that in your mind and in, in become whether you don't have to do it in lucid dreaming you can envision this person before you I, I, I have a meme on Facebook somewhere that says uh, before I do anything I ask my I ask my future self if he would be proud of me for what I'm about to do and if he says no I don't do it so that and that's that you 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 can do that so you can do it out of your dreams but 
I'm telling you, this is an experience that will change your life forever. If you practice lucid dreaming and successfully beat your guru within in your dream and get to speak to yourself 50 years from now or however long it is. I mean, I know the one that I was speaking to, he looked like he was 120 years old. I mean, just really, really old version of myself. But you, once you... Once you do that, once you speak to your guru within, your view on the world will completely change. Lucid dreaming is one of the most powerful tools to finding yourself, I, I, I truly believe. It, because why do people do drugs? They do drugs to escape from reality. They do drugs. Or they The people do things, whether it be a mental junkie, a drugs, a sex addict, uh, a video gamer. Everyone does these things. Whether and for Facebook, staying on Facebook all day, they do it because they are bored with their own reality. Well, what happens when your reality becomes more interesting than anything that you could do in your reality? <laughs> <laughs> that lucid dreaming. Talk about taking video games in Hollywood to a whole nother level. That's lucid dreaming for you. So uh, I see Veronica has uh, is comment. Rob, Veronica and Robert are commenting some more. So what are they saying? Okay, um, we're gonna welcome John in. He's just tuned in to watch. And Rich had a question about what's the benefits of lucid dreaming. And then um, you can answer that in just a second. Uh, Robert okay. Robert would say I would often yell myself awake during nightmares. And then he said, well, I have always said Google is your friend. And then Veronica says she wants to, she's fascinated by you and she wants to set up an interview. She would I would to interview. love to be, I would love for you to interview me, Veronica, anytime. Just, hey, shoot me a message and we can find a day that'll be great oh by the way miss mary that's something else i need to i was going to let you know i now have the ability to do calendly which is it's an easier way to set up podcasts um let's see i remember having a dream that came complete came complete with memories of owning a 98 and an 87 porsche 911 carrera i see that's what i'm talking about in your dreams you get to experience all that but i think i'm going to step back and who was that you said uh rich. john uh, rich rich he, he wanted it? to know the benefits of lucid dreaming the benefits of lucid dreaming is the is, are are truly endless uh because Think about it like this. Say you have a loved one who has passed and you didn't get to say goodbye and you don't, you, you, you don't know how to cope with it. Well, once you have mastered lucid dreaming, all you have to do is say hello and they'll come in, they'll walk up in front of you and you can experience your loved one before you like they never passed. I, I, I've sat with my grandfather many nights and, and had conversations with him, talked to him about his time in the war and and how and talked to him about where I am in my life now and 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 he tells me how proud he is of me and, and he wishes that he could have been here to see what I what I'm doing and and, and where I've gone in, in life. Uh, he I mean i my, I spoke to my grandmother. And I apologized to her for things that I had done prior to her, to her passing, even though I was a small child. And, and I was able to console and, and, and feel better about it because she told me herself. She said, it's, she said, it's okay. Uh, I'm in a better place now. And, and I mean, even though these, are being, these experiences are being created in your subconscious, you're not, you're not controlling what the other person says. They ha it seems to you that they have a mind of their own, like having a conversation with them in, in the real world, there's, there's no difference. Um, but there, it's, it, there, is, there is consoling with loved ones. There's simply e escaping your, the cell that is your brain, that is your, your, it's escaping your own reality. Like, for instance, my thing I love to do is the Superman effect. And that is that is literally walking outside. I, one of the things I like to do is I wake in my dream. 
I wake up in my bed and I get out of bed, turn around, look at my body and and see that I'm a, I'm asleep. And I go, okay, you're asleep. And I walk outside, because that's another thing too. If you see your body, if you see yourself, then obviously you're asleep or dead. Um, <laughs> you might have, but uh, uh, and then I walk outside and I just look up. And in my mind, I say, up. And I go up. And I mean, I've, I you go up and up and up, go above the stars, above the clouds, and, and just, just fly at, at the speed of sound or the speed of light, travel around the world. I mean, go stand on top of the pyramids in Egypt and feel the breeze on your, on your face, feel the sand particles hitting you and, and the sun beaming down and then, and then instantly, uh, 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 explode out of the sand uh, or explode out of the sand where somebody's buried you in, in on a beach in Hawaii and then get up and go have a margarita like you can literally there's no limit there's no there's literally no limit to what you can experience uh, like I said earlier if any of you that didn't get to see it or, or hear it one of the things that I love doing is sitting down with the greatest minds in history simply sit down have coffee with Abraham Lincoln Nikola Tesla Einstein uh, I mean I've even sat down uh, with Elvis Presley and and had conversations with him, Toby Keith. Uh, I I mean, it's it, it it doesn't have to be people that are dead. It could be people that are alive. I mean, and and even though the responses are being created by the imagination of your subconscious, it's still an expansion of your current awareness. It's an, it, you're you're able to expand your reality by getting to experience things. Because here's the thing: knowledge is knowing, wisdom is doing. Wisdom comes from experience. If you master lucid dreaming. You, the, you have access to a limitless amount of wisdom because you can experience anything. And you can, exp you can go anywhere. I have, I have ran across the Grand Canyon, hopping from one side to the other, running up walls, doing backflips, and landing, uh, landing at the bottom of Niagara Falls. Uh, I mean, literally tunneled to the center of the earth and observed the magma, the magma core and, and went above uh, uh, earth while the, the aurora borealis was going on and, and, and reached out and put my hand through the aurora borealis. A, you can experience magic. You can experience what would be considered a Hollywood movie or Avatar. If you only learn to lucid dream. Now, most people, I will tell you one thing that will completely shut down. I have nothing. Uh, now, we're going to go a little off topic. I have nothing against marijuana whatsoever. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now, if you're smoking weed, you cannot lucid dream. I don't know why, but it shuts it off completely. People who, a lot of people, the people who indulge in smoking weed a lot. Now, I don't know about other drugs. I just know that that is, that was my thing. And, uh, and I realized that if I smoked, I didn't remember my dreams. And if you can't remember your dreams, you can't activate a lucid dream. Because if you don't remember your dreams, it means that you weren't conscious within your dream. Uh, and you have to be fully conscious in your dream and have full mental control of your emotional state in the dream. That is one of the huge benefits of, of a lucid dreaming as well. Hey, somebody put up a tear mark when I said you can't smoke weed and do lucid dreams. <laughs> you must say hello to Molly. Molly, thank you for joining us. Howdy, <laughs> howdy. That was hysterical. I, that was great, uh, but that's <laughs> but that's a, that's another another great benefit of lucid dreaming is that it teaches you to control your emotional state because when you're in that dream, like I said, if you think it, if you feel it, it becomes reality. It becomes real. There is no bars held on your imagination. 
if uh, uh if if you s suddenly if you ha if you have ADD and you and you suddenly go squirrel, there'll be a squirrel sitting there. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, if you, I, I remember in one dream, I said, uh, pardon my French, but this is what I said. I said, this shit is nuts. And literally, nuts and poop <laughs> appeared. Like, <laughs> and they were, like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, I remember in one in one dream, like I was, <laughs> I was talking to this old guy sitting on a porch, and he's rocking back and forth in his wheelchair in his chair, and he goes, he goes, I can feel it in my bones. It's gonna rain cats and dogs around here <laughs> here soon. And I walked out. I was like, okay, I didn't think nothing of it. And I walk out the cabin, and all of a sudden, get hit with a cat. I'm like, meow. <laughs> I'm like, what the shit? Ah, ah. Like, <laughs> it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> like, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but getting hit by a great Pyrenees coming down from the sky isn't very fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when a cat hits you, they latch on. Like they ain't going, they <laughs> land on their feet. <laughs> um, uh, I know that I was, uh, I was, I, I, I had a dream one time that I was in a mansion that had a, uh, a glass, a mirror floor, and the and the mirror floor it had the sky painted on the ceiling, and the floor was made of a mirror. So when you when you go to step in the room, you're you, you kind of stop and you're like, "Whoa, wait a minute, is this okay?" You got to put your finger out and touch it first. You're like, "Is that a floor?" Or is, are we sure? You like crawl out on the floor so you don't fall. You're like, "I, I don't know about this. I don't know if this is okay or not." <laughs> and then when and I, I had a dream about that, and then in my like, I didn't realize that I had I was lucid dreaming, but I made the mistake of waking up a second time in my dream and in my upon waking up I didn't realize that I was lucid dreaming but I had switched out of a lucid dream so the the um, the uh, imagine the uh, the thought control was still there but the consciousness was not so I'm sitting there in this and I think this is real. Like I thought I had woken up and a friend of mine came, picked me up, took me to this really cool mansion. And we were looking at this and all of a sudden mm -hmm. I thought in my mind, I was like, man, what if all this turned to water or suddenly I was just falling to earth and the ground, the glass turned to a liquid glass and I fell through it and I was falling to earth and then I realized, oh my God, I'm dreaming. And uh, and and then I instantly did uh, while I was falling. I was like, it's all good. I have a Lear jet. And then, <laughs> bam! <laughs> I was in a jet. And I was flying. And, I, and it was once I realized I was dreaming again. Now that takes a lot of control. Uh, when you begin lucid dreaming for the first time, one of the things that you'll notice is you'll sit there and it's like having a remote control. You know that it controls that TV, but you push the button and you just can't get it to turn the channel and you're hitting it at different angles and you're like, Ugh! and then you finally get up <laughs> off the couch and you have to get real close and you're like, <laughs> and, well, because you'll tell the dream to do something. But if you don't truly believe it's going to happen, it won't happen uh, in, the, in the beginning. Because here's the thing. There's a, there's a catch-22 to it. <laughs> if, if, you're, if, you're, if your brain gets into that mode where it begins creating your reality as it's being thought up, it becomes fluid. But getting into that initially for the first time is, is hard. Once you realize you're dreaming, you have to focus on staying asleep and 
creating this reality while watching the words that you use. But uh, like, like, like I can, cause I can sit there and go, I can fly. And then I'll begin to lift off the ground. And then if even the slightest thought pops into my mind that this isn't really possible, I'm going to fall straight to the ground. Wow. And so you have to keep your thought consistent. There can't be any doubt. And that takes a lot of practice. So in practicing that, it will actually <laughs> cause you to, ha in turn, generate emotional control in the real world which is really cool because it, it a high IQ is nice, but a high intelligence IQ, I mean, not, not intelligence, a high emotional IQ is even more valuable uh, because personally, uh, when, I, when I was in elementary school, I was scored with an IQ of 145, and then I was later scored with an IQ of 179. Uh, but my emotional IQ was that of a child. I didn't uh, understand, and I still, I still have, I still have trouble understanding emotion. But I'm, uh, I'm better at it due to lucid dreaming. It, lucid dreaming is what one of the keys that I use to overcome the social anxiety aspect of Asperger's. Right. Uh, uh, so. Uh, because I would imagine myself in these large crowds of people and where I didn't experience, because in the dream, you don't experience that anxiety. And if you continue to put yourself in those positions in a dream as well as in the real world, eventually, the, the, the dominant feeling, the one that you choose to, to adhere to, becomes the one that actually takes over and you and that's the reason I can go to public places and for the most part sustain myself unless I have a, a sensory overload wow that's amazing yeah. <laughs> it is pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> hello stormy how you doing I think Jesus Ortiz is in here how you doing this evening let's see um Molly said, "If you hit the ground, you die." So they say. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. I've never actually hit the ground. I always seem to wake up suddenly, because you know I always tell people. People are like, "Well, uh, jumping off of the Empire State Building will kill you." No, it won't. <laughs> There's nothing about that that'll kill you. Yeah, the fall isn't going to hurt you. It's that sudden stop at the end that sucks. <laughs> 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 and uh, so I've never hit the ground yet, but I did get ran over by a tank in my dream one time, and I woke up in actual pain. So I don't know how real that is. Let's see what Veronica said. She said, I had a near death at age two and three, in which I believe I died and came back from drowning. As an adult, I've had dreams in which. I was going to drown, but then I started breathing underwater. That is that is very interesting, uh, actually. And another thing, Veronica, what I would do is I would be I would write your dreams down because a lot of times when a dream is repetitive, it's more of a premonition and not a dream. Uh, not everyone has this ability uh, naturally, but through meditation and the practice of lucid dreaming, premonitions actually become more more uh, it, it, more often than not. Uh, you you can have them because your brain actually taps into the, the to into your in, to the energy flow that you're actually experiencing on the outside. So the so you've heard me say before that the observations of particles on the quantum scale cause them to change their physical makeup and to whether they're negatively or positively charged in turn altering their route. But it's the exact same concept except for you have a deeper connection to this when lucid dreaming and combined with meditation on the daily basis. That's another thing too. Meditation helps assist in in getting into the uh, the lucidity because you're you're you're. It's all about what you have up here. Mental control 
and if you and lacking any form of mental control will cause you to slip out and lose control of your dreams. So Robert said something else. He said he had many dreams where he was breathing underwater and flying was a frequent occurrence. Yes. I've never actually had the breathing underwater experience. I'm going to have to uh, check that out. That's really cool. I do know that I have drowned before. Like, I didn't die, but I've drowned, and it is extremely painful. Um, it feels like someone lights your lungs on fire. Uh, and, uh, and, hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm trying to set up my camera with uh, the charger attached to it. I'm trying to be creative here for a second because I'm cool like that and that's what I do. <laughs> so, so I saw Robert said that he has a friend that is coming in and wants to ask a few questions. Yeah, uh, Tyler. I haven't seen him yet. Okay. Tell Robert, invite your friend. Tell him tell him hurry up or we give him no biscuits. <laughs> And Veronica, okay. okay. Veronica says she had a premonition dream of a coworker's mom passing away. When I went into the office that day, she wasn't there, and her mom died. End up passing away. You know, that's actually something that that is a side effect of lucid dreaming. I noticed, and it is a, actually a kind of a scary side that I don't truly understand the science behind. Uh, Robert said he heard his name from the kitchen. Yeah, we talking about you over here. All kinds of dirty talk. You should hear it. It's just, hey, you're a good person no matter what Mary says about you. I promise. Yeah, I promise. <laughs> uh, no, we was talking trash. You should have heard it. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> Um, but no, that's one of the scary sides of lucid dreaming is once you master the ability to lucid dream, and it could happen before that, but it happened once I felt that I was truly mastering the skill, is that you get this feeling and things happen in your dreams right before someone's about to die. And like one of the things that happens with me, and that it happened the first time when I was probably around 11 years old. I met a man here in Hot Springs, Arkansas, for the first time down on the lake, not too far from here. I was at a, uh, my Uncle Reggie's uh, mansion, and we went down to the dock, and there was, a, there was a, this man and a lady down there. I got to meet them, and when I, shook my, when I reached out and shook hands with this man, I felt what felt like a cold electrical shock went up my arm and down my spine. And it just felt like my skin turned to ice. And it just, like, so cold, I felt like, like, like if I would have blown my breath out, I could have seen it. And anyway, it felt odd, but I, I, I didn't think nothing of it. And he got, he then departed because that he was, I met him as he was leaving. And he got on his boat, and as he pulled his boat off of the dock and pulled out, a speedboat that was out of control smashed into the side of the boat, killing both of them, uh, knocking, but they drowned. It was a horrible death. Um, uh, <clears throat> but th this became a pattern. I noticed that when... I'd, I'd be around somebody. I'd walk past some, like, I, I know the second time I noticed it happened, I was in a store and a man brushed up against me in Walmart uh, as he was walking by. And when he brushed up against me, that same ice cold chill went from where he touched me down my spine and my whole body felt like ice, just like my skin was frozen. My hair stood up on my arms like I saw a ghost. And uh, the next day, that man was killed in a car accident. Um, I, we, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine had a cat. Uh, uh, this is this was not so long ago. I mean, I, I have a, a multitude of occasions where this has happened, and I and I initially thought it was just coincidence, but I realized that the more lucid dreaming I do, 
the more effective that is. And it, it only, like, when I'm practicing lucid dreaming, it happens. When I'm not, it doesn't. And uh, so, uh, well, anyway, I was practicing lucid dreaming, and I had been dreaming for, uh, I had been lucid dreaming for about five days in a row. Uh, I, and, and I actually, at that time, had extended my lucidity uh, to eight hours instead of six hours. And there was a man that had lived on the racetrack where I was working, and I, we used to go talk to him on a normal basis. He was just an old timer. He's a good dude, uh, but he was in good health, from what we could tell. And I go in there, and my friend, I have a friend named Addie, and she uh, she's uh, another person that worked on the racetrack and, and groomed horses. And I, uh, she knows about this ability or, or this thing that happens, and she actually tells me, if you ever feel that, you tell me, because she's been around and seen on quite a few occasions, uh, like a lot, she's seen where I, 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 I'm sitting there in a store or something, and I'll, I'll be like, man, that poor dude. And she's like, man, don't speak death over people like that because she thinks that I, she thinks that I speak death over them and they just die. <laughs> but it, it, it's not. It's not. I feel. It's like I can feel. It's, I, I hate to say it this way, but it's like I can feel the reaper. Um, but. Uh, a, but the, this recently, a friend of mine was uh, he 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 was at the racetrack and he had a cat. Well, we went to go visit him and I picked up his cat and was petting it, and the cat looked up at me and as it did, I felt that chill, and I told Addie I was like, hey, I think I think I mean I felt that when I was playing with his cat. And uh, she said she didn't say anything about it to him, but the next day the cat died. Uh, it, it just woke up dead, or didn't wake up. Hey, that's stupid. Woke up dead. <laughs> and then, uh, anyway, yeah. And then it was two days later. Uh, he died. His his kidneys gave his kidneys uh, gave way, and he died. He died of kidney failure uh, in the tack room that we were in that day. So. That is a downside, or, or that is a side effect of lucid dreaming. So just know that the more you lucid dream, the more you tap into your body's natural sixth sense. Uh, and you will experience things that can't be explained. Uh, you'll see. Sometimes sometimes I see things. I see people that aren't there. Uh, when, I'm, when I practice lucid dreaming a lot and I'm focusing hard on it I, while I'm awake, I'll see people that are standing there or they're talking and their, li their lips are moving, but they're not saying anything. Uh, and I'll see them. I might see them walking in the park. I might see them at my house out in the yard. Uh, I mean, they're as real as me or you, but then suddenly they vanish. And so I know that they're, they're hallucinations and it's due to the lucid dreaming. Um, I, you'll hear voices You'll at some point you will begin. So that's that's what I'm saying. You have to be careful of lucid dreaming. It's powerful. A lot of people can't handle it. You'll you'll hear voices. You'll see things. You'll uh, uh like I that does like you'll hear people speaking to you, and there's nobody there, and so and it and it's scary at first when it when it when it when it happens. But the more you practice lucid dreaming, the more it will happen. Once you lucid dream multiple nights in a row you'll begin to experience weird things like this wow you'll have odd connections i see comments rolling in so what's up yeah let me get to, i'm gonna start with veronica's first because uh her three are related and she said i had a dream of my dad passing away less than a year of his passing i saw my dad's light leave his body about two to three days before he passed but i didn't really understand stand it at the time that I saw it and she said I did feel I would never see him again well that's I mean that's a premonition and and when you see when you practice lucid dreaming if you would have experienced that in a lucid dream you would have been able to break it down and further understand it uh, it gives you more time because when you're not lucid dreaming uh, you see something and then it's gone. 
Like it, there you can't, you have no control. Uh, but when you're in a lucid dream, you can actually hit the rewind button. Uh, there's not physically a button there unless you make there be a button there. But you can, you can. It, this is a trick that is hard to do. It takes a lot of practice. But you can actually look at w what you just saw and rewind it and see it again. Uh, it's like I said, it's a that is an that is an advanced lucidity trick. Uh, to, but it but it can be done. Then she says, I see people upon waking, and I'm not afraid of seeing spirits. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, I actually believe that spirits can be explained through physics. I mean, if you any physicist in the world will tell you that spirits are real. There's no denying them because the the energy that makes up everything around us cannot be created nor can it be destroyed it can only be dispersed so that so when this vessel dies the energy that it, that makes up this vessel uh, cannot be destroyed it has to be it has to go on somewhere and what i actually believe is that uh, due to the fact that we're aware of of approximately 14 different dimensions of of reality uh, I believe that when we see spirits, where what we what we call ghosts are really dimensional glitch, glitches. Uh, so it's it's simply this dimension's right beside this dimension, and then a wave happens and, and they touch. And when they touch, a little bit of what is over here. So they're they're around us at all times, but it isn't until their reality, their 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 uh, dimension their their reality uh, touches ours a little bit and we get what would be glitches or glimp glimpses into what's what's already around you but suddenly the two mixed and you were able to witness what was there and then the wave the way see it comes in waves it touches and then it dissipates and it's a, a it's just simply a, a dimensional glyph. Uh, so, like for instance, the Mandela effect. That's something that we can talk about another day because I can I'll get into it. It's it, I can explain it through physics, but it takes quantum mechanics to understand. Um, and it's uh, your viewers don't have time for all that right now. <laughs> you could reschedule another point. We'll be honored to have you back. Okay. Mm. So do we have any more questions? Did said Tom or whatever his name was come? Okay. Uh, Robert had some comments. Uh, Robert, uh, did you hear back from Tyler? Because I hadn't seen him yet. But, but let's get to Robert's comments. He said, uh, I went into 2013 absolutely certain that I would not meet someone that was just like me except a girl. And I did get a premonition a week and a half out that it was going to happen. I used to think of it as that certain feeling when I was young and single. One, one point five to two weeks before someone new came into my life. And he says, you know, if there is an insurance company out there that has done you wrong, you have the means to become in their a thorn in their side by taking out policies on these people as soon as possible. <laughs> I see what he's saying. <laughs> and then he says he you were talking, I guess, um, about um, the, the death, the dead. And he says, now I'm sad. And now he says, I am reliving the memory of Sarah's cat dying. She went above and beyond, staying alive far longer than she needed to, and she left when I told her it was okay to go. Oh. Wow. And then... He can't comment, but is watching. Okay, so uh, tell uh, Mr... What do you say? His name's Tyler? Tyler. Okay, Tyler, I am speaking directly to you now. So uh, you can obviously speak through Robert. So whatever your question is, please have, uh, please let Robert know so he can ask. We don't have a lot of time left, but I will answer whatever question you bring to the table. 
Okay. Hey, Veronica, if you, you you can chat with me anytime you want, anybody, if you'd ever like to chat with me. If I don't get back to you immediately, I'll get back to you as soon as I do uh, see it. And I, I have just a moment to 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 reply. Um, if I if it shows that I saw your message and I don't reply instantly, it's not because I'm being an uh, an arse. Uh, I, that means an ass. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just working and back to you as quickly as possible. But yes, you can message me in chat if you'd like to, Veronica. Any questions that anyone has, please bring to the table. Robert, is your buddy speaking to you and uh, giving you any questions to ask currently? <laughs> we gotta keep, gotta keep people engaged. Keep so, while we're waiting with, with um, Tyler to ask Robert questions, would you like to tell everybody about your announcement that you put out on Facebook today, just in case they did not see it? Oh, okay, yes. I am launching a new podcast starting next week. It is the st negative i believe he is somewhere else at the moment that's okay robert that's all good so anyway i am launching a new podcast my personal podcast show next week it's it's uh stay humble the stay humble hustle hard podcast i actually have that tattooed on my arm stay humble hustle hard and that is my logo for the podcast if you want to check that out just go over to my facebook page i am uh working i was actually when i went live on this i was working on my uh facebook page for that so if you want to be a guest on the show just shoot me a message let me know what's your hustle how you stay humble and we will uh, we'll chit chat. We'll see if you're a good candidate for the show, and we'll get you on there. Hey, I, I don't hold any bars against anybody. If anybody wants to to be on the podcast, as long as you have value to bring to the table, and it's not an ambush interview, then we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, Aaron. Good evening, Frank. So as we close, uh, is there anything, any takeaways, last words you like to leave with the audience? Hey, I always tell people, no matter what, you know, uh, you know, I got to say it each and every time that I'm uh, on any show, uh, I say, be the blessing for others and you'll live within blessings. If, if, if you, if you just take one moment out of your day to compliment somebody on, on what they're wearing or what they're doing, if you take, if you take one moment out of your day to, to simply bless somebody, whether it be financial, emotional, or simply giving them a compliment or holding a door open for somebody, what you can, what you can, you can, act, you can alter the way that their life or their week is going, which in turn can, can, can have effects years down the road so like i said be the blessing for others and you truly will be, uh, live within blessings believe in karma and and they see it used to be called the golden rule but you never hear it anymore just treat others as the way that you would like to be treated just, i mean it, it it know that you would enjoy it if someone randomly walked past you and gave you a compliment uh, uh, on something you're wearing or, or, or the way that you're looking that day. It, it makes people feel good. And when you make others feel good, you feel good. Whenever you, when, you, when you do good things for others, good things happen to you. Give when you don't have anything to give, even, even if it's just a moment of your time. So that's my, that's my message to people. And, and no know that I heard, I heard a guy tell you today I was at the IHOP with actually Paul S I don't actually know how to say this guy's name but he's really cool Paul Sabaj or Sabaj I don't know how to say his last name I'm probably butchering that uh, sorry <laughs> I do apologize Paul I got to have coffee with him today and uh, at the IHOP it was wonderful and I heard a man there today say he said Life, life, life is is like a mountain is a mountain with valleys, 
Sometimes you're going to be on top of the mountain, and then sometimes you're going to appear in the valley and not understand how you got there. Uh, and and some, when you stand on top of the mountain, just know there's another mountain to climb. So life comes in seasons. It's not The sun's not always going to shine. It's not always going to be bright and happy, but know that without the darkness, without your pain, the light would hold no value. Your world would hold no value it wasn't for the hardships you've gone through. So be the blessing for someone today or tomorrow or the end the next day. Make a practice of it and watch your life change. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you for sharing with us. And Aaron You're said he loved listening to this. And um, I really appreciate you being here. It's always an honor. Hey, it's always a blessing to be here. I love I love uh, doing the, the, these show podcasts with you. As long as I'm able to bring value to somebody, be the spark be the spark that lights the way through the darkness for even a single soul, and my life will have been worthwhile. And get with me and reschedule so you can talk about um, your next topic. <laughs> you oh talk yeah, the, the Mandela effect. And then. Um, <laughs> Don't forget to ride your guide to Lucid Dreaming and post it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I will ride a guide to that. It's uh, hey, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate you. Uh, look, don't forget. I'm gonna say this before I jump off here. Don't forget. Look me up on Facebook, Tucker Bearden, inspiring the world. Uh, join join our community of around twenty some odd thousand people over there, and and I have a page. I don't know if it's live yet, but if it is, go like it up. And that is the Sustainable Hustle Heart Podcast. So go check that out. And if you would like me to speak at, at your event, if you would like me to come on to your podcast, all you got to do is hit me up on Facebook. I, I'll drop my information below, my contact information, so, so, you can, so you can message me, get in touch with me, and we'll chop it up and see if we're a good fit for one another. I truly appreciate you having me on the show. I appreciate everybody for watching. So, and uh, you be blessed, Miss Mary, and have a you good too. night. Right? You have a good evening, and I'm gonna say good night. And I appreciate and love everybody for being here. I couldn't do what I do without y'all support and love. And if everybody will join me Saturday at 2 p.m. Central, I guess we'll meet Jamie McCormick. Thank you, everybody, and have a good evening.